I talked about this briefly in a previous video, but I thought it would be a good idea to have a dedicated video just talking about vegetable tanned versus chrome tanned leather. So, as most people know, leather starts out as a, just a raw hide, which needs to be tanned. Two of the most common ways to do that are chrome tanning, which uses uh, chromium salts and things like that, and vegetable tanning, which uses vegetable extracts and uh, bark and the tannins from all those. The, the two processes have quite a different effect on the leather. Chrome tan leather makes up a huge, the vast majority of leather, and that's used more for upholstery and clothing and things like that. It's quite supple and it's soft, whereas vegetable tanned leather, it tends to be used in more traditional settings, like anywhere that contacts metal, generally, because the chromium salts in chrome tanned leather don't play well with metal, so so generally any sort of like gun holsters, knife sheaths, things like that, they'd traditionally be made with veg tan leather. I think veg tan leather is just a much more durable material, so I, I much prefer working with it. Chrome tan leather tends to be made in like a couple of days, that's that's why it's quite appealing, you can make it very quickly, whereas veg tan leather takes a few weeks. Because of that, it's generally much more expensive than chrome tan leather. The way that you work with the two different kinds is slightly different as well. So things like burnishing, which is what you do to your edges on veg tan leather, Chrome tanned leather doesn't really burnish so much, so it's better to use like edge paints and things like that. Veg tan's good for wet molding things as well, so if you're making maybe uh, knife sheaths and, and things like that, you can wet form veg tan leather and it keeps its shape really well. And also if you're doing any tooling, so any if you're stamping any designs on there or anything, you can't really do that with most chrome tanned leathers, or most finished leathers at all actually. I don't tend to use much chrome tan leather, so I don't have like a, a huge stock of it or anything. But th this is it here, it's, it's really soft and it's nice to the touch. But if you can see the difference, this is, this is a notebook I made for my partner for her Christmas. And in the five months or so, it's hardly changed at all from new. Whereas veg tan leather, that's what it looks like before it's been finished and this is maybe a couple of months old you can see how much that's darkened so that's the patina that I've, I've mentioned before in videos as well that's how the the leather kind of ages chrome tan leather doesn't really do that in the same way but i would say if you're gonna if you're looking to make really good quality sort of wallets and and belts and like really durable kind of materials i would probably recommend veg tan leather the majority of the, the veg tanner I use is like unfinished like this, but there's lots of tanneries that do veg tan leather in really nice finishes like this, different colours. So just because you're using veg tan leather, it doesn't mean you have to just have plain undyed leather. So for, for those reasons, I definitely prefer veg tan leather myself. But maybe if, if you like brighter colours, you're happy using edge paint and things like that, you should by all means try the chrome tan leather. It's much cheaper, um, so there's plenty of options there. Okay, so uh, that's it for another video. Um, keep the questions coming if anyone wants to know anything else. I've got a few more projects I'm going to be putting up over the next few weeks. Okay, okay, till next time.